Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Addiction Watch Reviews. Hope you're having an awesome day. Now today we're taking a look at a watch brand from Australia, one that has been mentioned on the channel before. This is the Melbourne Watch Company Sorrento Collection. It's their dressy diver, and it's a pretty unique watch. It's pretty cool. It's definitely its own thing. It's not a homage watch or anything like that, uh, which I know some of you guys hate. But um, yeah, this is the Sorrento. So it comes with a two-year warranty. The price point straight out of the box we're looking at it's 950 Australian or 672 US dollars for you guys in the States here. And that does come with a two year warranty and of course 30 days returns. But I believe there's a 10% coupon when you sign up for a newsletter on their website. I did notice that when taking a look at their website. Uh, here's the watch and the box in front of you. Shipping was great, about three days DHL from Australia. No issues there whatsoever. So here is a quick glimpse at the watch as you can see. It has a quite a stunning dial and some unique details that many other smaller brands really don't get and you know I really think this is a great value dive watch and one that can be worn with a suit as well but the packaging itself as you can see here comes in this nice Melbourne watch company box and as you can see inside there's a little padding and inside we do get a nice wood box and let me just show you I have all this stuff in there but you do get a nice polishing cloth as well as your Melbourne Watch Company International Warranty as you can see here. Polishing cloth, some hang tags, and Australian made of course. But most of you guys don't really care about boxes, but it is a very decent wood box. And I do appreciate that. Let's get this out of the way and get into the actual watch. So here she is again, the Sorrento Diver. Now I'm starting off with some basic specifications so you can get to know this watch a little bit better. We are looking at a diameter of 42 millimeters, so it's not overly large or big. It's a pretty decent size for a modern dive watch. We are looking at a lug to lug distance of 50 millimeters. We have 22 millimeter lug widths here. And we are looking at a case thickness of 13.5 millimeters. Now the finishing on this model, obviously this is crafted of all solid 316L stainless steel all around. The case itself is completely brushed even the lug tops as well as the case back. Now the brushing is really fine on this watch. If you didn't notice that, you can see the nice crown guards here as they integrate into the case here. Everything is really finely brushed. If we take a close look at that, it's really smooth and it's very well done. Now the crystal itself is a flat sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating, as you can see there. So when the light hits it, you know, you don't get any crazy glare or anything like that. It's very legible. As you can see, the light is hitting it now, and it's definitely still legible. And it's a pretty decent crystal. It feels of good quality. You know, there's there's all different uh, levels of sapphire crystals. Some people are like, oh my god, this watch is $30. It comes with the sapphire crystal. But it's not a good quality sapphire crystal. And a lot of people don't know that, I think. There's tons of different levels of sapphire crystals. For example, a sapphire crystal on a Rolex is going to be much more expensive than a sapphire crystal like this. Just what goes into cutting it and making it um, is a lot more expensive. And I think that's a good thing to keep in mind. But this one seems pretty decent quality, as you can see the edges there. Everything is really nice. Now this watch is a true dive watch, as it is rated to 200 meters. We get a screwed down, signed crown with the Melbourne logo as well as a case back, which is held down by four screws, which is a pretty thick case back. The case has, has a little chunk to it. It feels pretty, you know, hefty, not like overly heavy, but you know, it's a good size for a dive watch, especially one that can go 200 meters. And you can definitely take shallow diving with you or in any water lake, water sports or anything like that. Now a nice feature, before we get to the dial, the 120 click bezel is actually made of aluminum, if you didn't realize that. So we have two different metals, the stainless steel and the aluminum bezel. Now the bezel itself has a ceramic insert, but it does have th this wave pattern, which is very smooth also. If you can really see that, it's like a subtle detail, as you can see right there on the top. There's a nice wave pattern on the dial, uh, which is really nice. I think that's a nice little detail that they did there. Now the dial itself is a multi-layered dial, and it's actually ceramic. We have planks going across here. We have a date aperture at three. We have applied loomed markers, as you can see. Nice brushed hands. Uh, which are filled with a nice amount of loom as well. And then a sweeping seconds hand, which has a loom little rectangle on the end of it. And I like the fact that it does reach out to the chapter ring over here where it states 0 through 60. Uh, the Melbourne logo is applied over here below 12. Then if I can move the hands here, you can see Sorrento 
which also is applied in script in silver to match the hands right above six o'clock. I think it looks really nice. It's really a classic looking watch. Um, almost reminds me of like a Breitling Super Ocean. Not that it looks like it, but that kind of watch where you can wear sporty and dressy at the same time. Now inside of this watch is the Salita SW200. Most of you are probably familiar with it. It's a Swiss made automatic movement, the equivalent of an ETA 2824. It's used by brands such as Oris and tons of other brands. Even IWC uh, did use them. Now they're using in-house calibers, but it's a great movement. 38 hours of power reserve, hand winding, hacking, 28,800 vibrations per hour. This one running about three seconds fast a day. And I believe Melbourne does regulate their movements in a way. And I'm pretty sure that they do because this one's extremely accurate. If I uh, screw this crown back in, we're going to screw it out. First position, we get self-winding. And it is pre pretty easy to grip this crown, even though we have these nice large crown guards. And then your second position, we get a quick set date. And your third position, we can set the time here. I must say the hands are really legible as they are quite bold. And I think that's a good thing that they did that. Let me just screw this back down. Okay. Now the bracelet itself, it's an oyster style bracelet. It's uh, we have solid end links and it does have quick release pins. Everything does line up really nice too, as you can see here, there's no gap or anything like that. So the bracelet itself does have screw in links. It does have a signed polished fold over here. I'm just going to pop this open. We get two buttons, a pretty standard run of the mill clasp, but um, it's, it feels pretty good. The finishing on the inner part where this clasp is, and it feels pretty secure. I don't think you should have any issues there. We do get three micro adjustments and the links are curved. So they're not flat. So they're quite thin actually. And they are curved. So you're not gonna get any hair pull or anything like that. And everything sits pretty flush with each other. Now the coolest feature on this watch, I think, is the quick release bracelet. So you have these two pins here. You push them both together. Bracelet pops right off if you want to change straps. And it's a great feature. I saw a couple other brands doing this a while ago. And I think it's really uh, cool. You can throw a NATO on a rubber strap and it's really easy instead of using a spring bar tool and especially scratching the backside of your lugs. Now the case back, as you can see, features a vintage diver helmet, which is stamped and raised. And it's really nice. If you can look at that, held down by four screws, basic specifications, 26 joules, of course, inside the Salita SW200, 200 meters water resistant. Now the actual bezel action is really good because we get this nice grip here. As you can see, these nice cutouts, it is polished on the sides of the bezel and the action is really good. There's really no backplay, if any slight minimal, but nothing really. Really solid clicks and everything does line up perfectly to the 12 o'clock position. So there's no quality control issues there. Um, that's a big thing for me. A lot of people, if the bezel doesn't line up, I'm not buying it, right? <laughs> but don't worry, the bezel does line up on this model. Now, I want to get you guys a loom shot, show you exactly what the loom looks like. It glows blue, and I'm pretty sure it's BGW9, but let's take a look. Okay, so here's a nice loom shot for you guys. Actually, it does glow green in color, or it's like a light green. It's like a bluish green, but as you can see, we get uh, loom plots on all the markers, the hands as well, and it lasts quite a long time here. It's not perfectly dark, but you can get a sense of the loom here. Now, there she is on my 6.5 inch wrist. So as you can see, it has a 50 millimeter lug to lug width, but uh, the, it doesn't really wear that big. As you can see, it fits end to end on my wrist. Definitely not like a the dimensions suggest. I would say it wears a bit smaller, but it is quite a nice chunk on the wrist. I do like that. Feels like a nice hefty diver there. And everything looks pretty good. As you can see, there's the backside of the bracelet here. Nice uh, polished over here, polished center links. The bracelet is really comfortable, and I don't think you should have any problems wearing this. My wrist is 6.5 inches, and as you can see, it looks pretty decent on my wrist. And yeah, I think it looks good. It's quite classy and dressy and sporty at the same time, and that's, uh, that's a good thing to have. So there you have it, the Sorrento watch by Melbourne, Melbourne Watch Company out of Melbourne, Australia. I'm not really sure if they're a micro brand. They, uh, they, I believe they have their own shop and their own technicians in-house that assemble these watches in Australia. So I'm not exactly sure if it's a micro brand or just a smaller brand or a local brand, you should say. But it's definitely a pretty cool watch for the money from a smaller company. Uh, the finishing is really good in the case cut. Some nice details such as a ceramic dial. You get all the goodies, Salita SW200, you know, good loom, and a very decent looking watch in its own style. And I think it's pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think down in the description below. 
as usual, let me uh, let me know and I will answer you. Also, check me out at watchaddictchannel.com where you can read the full article on this watch. And definitely visit Melbourne if you want to grab one of these. I don't think there's many left. I was looking at their website. There's only six left in stock. So I assume these sell uh, pretty good for the company. But uh, anyway, guys, I will see you on the next one. And you can always follow me on Instagram at Watch Addict Channel. There you can see watches that will be upcoming on the channel here. So it's definitely good to follow me there. I will see you guys soon.